turn this down. Let me wire myself up. Hold up. Just get a drink of water real quick. All right. So welcome, welcome to another how to airbrush video. I'm getting myself a microphone on. And today we're we're, step, we're taking it all a step back, right? So we, we played around with the woman's face. We did it in monochrome. Then we did it in color. And by the end of that color video, you probably got a pretty good idea of, of like, if you're already at that point, uh, my instruction is probably not very helpful. <laughs> no, um, you, you know, you, you probably got a difference in the amount of work required uh, between one and the other. And, and you know, it, it just takes a lot more work. So we're taking a step back today. We're going back a little bit more beginnerish. So if you're just starting out and you just want to make a cool little design and you want to make some results, you know, like get some quick and easy results. Uh, here we have a design. Again, I have laid it on the heavy paper. Oh, and oh, that's the link I forgot to add. So I'll, I'll link the heavy paper down below. Uh, again, the links down below the video, uh, you'll find some links. Th using those links helps the channel. Uh, that gives us a kickback on all those links. So we appreciate it if you use those. So if you like use, seeing these videos and you want to see more, using those videos helps us provide more uh, videos. Um, yeah, you know what I mean. Anyway, shout out to our sponsor, Createx Colors here uh, for providing the paint for today's video. And today we're going to be keeping it pretty simple. We're going to be using some wicked black and some wicked white. Now, if you have the regular Createx uh, you know, opaque black and create X opaque white. That'll work. If you have the illustration opaque black and the illustration opaque white, that'll work as well. Um, and then along to go with that, we're going to be using a little bit of 4011 reducer. What's up? What's up? Steven Ward. How's it going? So as always, the live chat is there for our channel members. If you like these videos and you want to see more videos like this and you just want to help, uh, you know, provide money for time, materials, and everything else that goes into these videos, um, not to mention the knowledge. Uh, <clears throat> you know, joining the Skull Squad, $2 uh, gets you access to the live chat. It's not very much, but every little dollar helps. Um, yeah, and we also have different tiers, so if you really like the channel and you want to see previous videos, as well as get early access, uh, la ya yada yada, click on the join button down below, find out more, and I appreciate all your support as always. Um, one last thing is uh, if you want to buy yourself some stencils and support the channel at the same time, down here in this little area, down off to the right, you'll find the website mikesbrush.com and it's also linked down below. Buying those website also, buying those stencils through the website also directly helps provide for these videos. Anyway, now that we've got all through the intro, man, the intro is just getting longer. Oh, oh, oh. One last thing too, the, the links down below, uh, obviously we got to send a shout out to Spray Gunner. Um, so they've kind of partners up with us to bring you guys better deals on more airbrushes and better quality and just a wider range of supplies available and being able to bring those and show those to you guys so you guys can make a more well-informed decision when it comes down to buying your airbrush supplies. So again, using those links down below, we'll link you off to Spray Gunner um, and you know, again, it's all about keeping it all in the community. So Spray Gunner is part of the community. We're part of the community. And we're all just kind of just mm, trying to get everything and get you guys all the best deals. Anyway, that, that, that now, now we're down, we're done. <laughs> we're done with the intro for sure. So what's up, Steven Ward? How's it going? What's up, Jesus? Uh, how's it going? How's it going? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, we got a little bit of sunshine today. Uh, so it was pretty good. What's up, Go Kid? Yeah, the Steen Souls. Yes, sir. Uh, Air Todd, how's it going, man? Nice to see you again. Cool. So we're going to take our handy dandy blade. I've cut out my design 
and uh, we're gonna take off a few pieces now in this particular design I want to leave the background on and I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it on there right so I, I want to keep that background kind of white just to so that our design pops out and then maybe at the end I'll go back and, and kind of you know feather in or kind of just dust in a, a little background you know maybe using the the brick stencil or something I don't know we'll see when we get there it might just look so clean and nice that I just might want to just keep it nice so I might just do that anyway uh, we're gonna start off with a little bit of removal and we're gonna remove quite a few pieces before we start so we got these pieces off to the side of the, of the skull here on this side and this is one of those designs where I don't think I don't think where I'm gonna need these pieces again so I'm just gonna let them fall where they fall and the broom will pick them up here tomorrow so I uh, got those so you got the nose the eyes these two pieces off to the side right that side this side what's up Herb Herbie how's it going welcome welcome 50 nuts welcome to the skull squad how's it going sir 50 nuts huh that that's half of a hundred I like it um, so we got those uh, five pieces removed. And then also, if you look on the left-hand side of the screen, on the, on the little jingle bell things, uh, it has these little, these little, uh, I guess the, the middle piece. I don't know what you call it. The, the, it's like the, the part where the sound comes out. The cutout in the middle. I don't know what it, what, this is not a normal bell, so I don't know. And actually, even on a normal bell, what do you call the part where the hole is? The bell part? I don't know, but we're gonna take those little, these little pieces right here, right? So let me let me just zoom in to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so you see these, see these, this little hole, right? Cause in here there's like a little stone or a BB or whatever, and it'll bounce around jingles. But they use this hole to get it in there. And this is also what makes the sound kind of that ding 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 sound that this hole we're taking those off <laughs> i don't know what it's called i just know the sound it makes when it kills man you know <laughs> cool so again just gonna start over here you know have those holes uncovered and let's start mixing up some color so i'm gonna take the air, an airbrush here and this is the GSI Creos PS289 again link down below quickly become one of my one of my daily airbrushes here and I'm just gonna take some wicked black just a little bit and I mean a little bit I'm gonna drop like two drops in here because we're gonna mix up some gray so I'm gonna use about two drops of black maybe three and then we're gonna throw in, mm, let's say, 12 drops of white. And I'm trying to give you guys a good ratio so you guys can follow. So 12, 12 to three, 12 drops of white to three drops of black. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Ah, 13, because that last one I always wipe off. So about 13. There's a little bit of paint in there. Then we're gonna take some reducer. And reducer's harder to count in drops, but we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to count uh, 10. So all right, and it's one, two, three. Well, I don't know, those like, there's like 10 right there. Those, those are like little squirts. I don't know, it's hard to judge. And then I'm gonna shake this up. What's up, Dennis, how's it going? You're good, you're good, you haven't missed anything yet. We're just about to start. So, gonna shake this up really good. Straight off, see here we've got, got a nice like medium gray. It's just perfect. And we're working at about 20 PSI. If you wanna get in more detailed and stuff, Maybe turn it down, 15. 
maybe reduce a little bit more, maybe twice the amount of reducer and maybe reduce it a little bit more and you'll be able to get in a lot closer and finer uh, with your details. But we're gonna start with the medium gray. We're just gonna lay a shadow all the way around these. Right. Now this design is going to kind of be simpler, but still more advanced than the ones we've done before because we're starting to throw more colors in. So even though it's just black and gray, um, you know, it's still before we were just doing like black. Uh, these little sides here. So on the left side, I'm going to hit the right and on the on the right side, I'm going to hit the left here. Hit the top part simple and then we're going to go around the nose just a nice little soft shadow i feel like this music's a little too loud let me turn it down all right there that's good cool and then we're going to hit in just going to fill in those little the holes on the bells that's what i'm going to call it the holes on the bells Make sure you got the edges really good. Nice and shaded. And I'm just gonna take some black now. So here I have my Iwata Eclipse. And we're just gonna mix up a little bit of black. And I mean a little bit. We're gonna take drops. I'm going to throw about 10 drops because we don't need a whole lot for this exercise and we are going to reduce it a little bit. Now this exercise is, although the design is a little more simple, um, we're reducing the paint a little bit more. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten in the wipe. And then we're going to throw about the same or maybe more reducer, probably ten drops it's hard to judge with the reducer because it just kind of goes in but um <clears throat> it's all about working a little bit slower and the pressure a little bit lower and the paint a little bit finer so this exercise is kind of what that's about even though it's it's it can be done by a beginner if you start learning in, in this way um, you'll have an easier time once you move forward because the paints it's a little bit more reduced. Now on the eyes, all we're gonna do is hit this top. See this top, bam, on both sides with the black. Nice reduced black. And just a nice shadow on the top. Nothing crazy. On these sides of the head, we're just gonna hit the top where like the hat is, bam. Same thing on the other side, just hit that top. All we're trying to do is make that shadow off the hat come down. That gray off the side of the, this, uh, what is that called? The, the bone off the side of your, um, your eye there. Uh, your brow, geez, your brow bone. Uh, that's dark enough, right? So if you've mixed up a medium gray like I have, uh, that's gonna be dark enough. You don't really need to throw anything else in there. All we need to do is shade down off of the nose, so off the top, and then we're just going to come shade it down, even in the center, just kind of shade it down. Again, the bottom will be dark enough with the gray. We don't really need to do anything else to that. That's fine. Um, then we're going to move to the bottom jaw. So again, working depth, we're, we kind of started with these because it's underneath that. And then now we have to move to the bottom jaw because it's under and behind this top uh, jaw. So we're going to go ahead and remove this bottom jaw. And also link down below, you'll find a link to the spray adhesive. So a lot of people m message me and ask, how did I get the paper to stick? And that is the spray adhesive that's linked down below. A lot of people have never used it. You just lightly coat just once, you know, really quick spray on the back. You don't need to cover it heavy or anything. Just a, a really quick wisp. The temple, yeah, the temple. 
I think the temple's up in the middle, though, right? This, what is this called? I think it's the brow. Anyway, um, <clears throat> one quick uh, little spray of the spray adhesive will stick your paper, and even now it's still sticky even after taking it off there. So we're going to remove that bottom draw. We're going to take our gray. We're going to bring a shadow down off the top, going down. Get you. Right. I'm just trying to hold this paper down. Oh, and there went, there went that tooth. Where'd it go? Let's put it back. Just talking about one little bit of the spray, but really all you need is one little bit of a spray to make it stick You don't want to over stick it um, And that's using that spray is just comes from doing shirts and that's kind of how we used to stick our stencils onto shirts yeah, Or that is still how we stick our stencils onto shirts Great, good mix. Okay. Just bringing down that shadow on that side. Bam. And I'm just kind of using the shield to hold down the teeth so they don't go offline on me, but hopefully they're all nice and stuck on there. We can kind of move in close. And so right off of the teeth here, I'm gonna try to point with this um, so in between these teeth here, right, right where the line is, uh, and I just knocked off that same tooth. That one tooth does not want to be there. Uh, but anyway, where the line is, we're going to try to hit a little dagger stroke. Oh, look at that tooth just not want to stay right off of there. Just a little dagger stroke. Just bring that down. Right? Then we're going to go all around the edge with a little bit of gray. Bam. Isn't that too crazy? If you want to get in there and get it nice and detailed, maybe start adding some little bit of bone texture in there. That's totally fine. And I just like using a little bit of stippling and a little bit of, you know, crackling lines. And really get some cool little designs in there. Again, even though it's a design for beginners, if you have a little bit more skill, you can throw it at the design and you can achieve a quick, cool result. Um, just by taking a little bit more time with it So even though if you're a beginner you do it the first time Then you could come back in a year, you know and see how much you've progressed and do it again And just see how much detail you could get in every time and I wish these teeth would stay down Cool Simple enough <clears throat> I'm just going to come back in with the black, reinforce the shadow off of the top over here. Just coming down just a little bit on each side. Bam. And then maybe just a little bit on the chin right in the middle. And a little bit right on the sides here. Just kind of reinforcing the gray, not really just, not really trying to make it black, but just a nice little blend into the gray. Um, just makes it nice and cool. Now, we want to start with the back teeth. The farthest back tooth on both sides, and this side over here already flew off. And I'm going to probably just take this and lean it like this. Now, the teeth, I'm going to try to get you in here close. 
when you're working the teeth, you get in there nice and close. Hit that edge just a little bit. And then the back ones are molars, so you kind of hit a little shadow and like a line right in the middle there. And that's going to give it kind of a dip impression right in the middle. And then we remove that next tooth. Like me too, me too. No, not you too. You wait your turn, Mr. Tooth. Wait your turn. Hold it down. Come back in with the gray. Bam. Now you can go put that edge, a little bit of gray, bam. And simple. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Go there. These teeth are very unruly. They're like, no, man, you're not the boss of us, man. <laughs> it's all right, though. We can just take our shield and put that right in place where the tooth was. If you also, if your teeth are also kind of getting a little squarely on you. Just go ahead and use a shield. Get it in there. And I'm just going to come back in with some freehand. Get those teeth in there nice and marked. Hopefully your glue is working a little better than this glue is right now. Maybe I should have put more than one little wisp, huh? Maybe I should have done two little wisps of glue. <laughs> there you go. It's always a battle though when you're doing it this way. But uh, working with frisket can be quite challenging for a beginner, so I wouldn't recommend it right right, right away. Um, and it, frisket's also, um, like you can't use it on certain stuff. And application is kind of a, a pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> so just to put it lightly, it's a pain in the butt. So we're going all the teeth one by one. Oh, come on. Spraying this side and that side pops up and spraying that side and this side pops off. It's like, which one? Decide, man. Anyway, it'll be all right. You kind of get the point at this point. Ain't no point in me repeating myself. And I could do this freehand. I'm just trying to show you. <laughs> and let's see, the last two teeth, I kind of like it just like that. <clears throat> now, again, if you have the skills you could always come back in refine your teeth a little bit and that's all I'm gonna do is just kind of throw a quick little outline on it using a little light now if you're making this dime really big obviously you could just come and do what I'm doing and or if you've been practicing your little lines, this is a good time to use them. Just throw a nice little line in there. And then you can throw some shadows in there. Now, one of the most fascinating parts of skulls I always find is the teeth. It's a lot of people's idea of how the teeth look on a skull and how they actually are <clears throat> are completely different. So a lot of people think it's a lot of people think it's like this, like the teeth are just attached to the skull, but there's actually like a root, you know, here, and then there's like a, an attachment point, and it's kind of like really pitted, and, and it looks. 
it kind of looks weird to be honest with you and um, there's a lot going on but we can move on once we finish those bottom teeth once you're satisfied with your teeth you can go ahead and remove the whole top of the skull try not to remove your teeth you're remove that Bam. And we're going to start with the gray. Going to hit a shadow off the top. All right, just a nice little shadow around. Going to bring a shadow, kind of bring it in with his brows, so a little bit one to one side and one to the other, shading towards the middle, right? Then his teeth, his teeth, his eyes here. <laughs> We're gonna kind of just bring a nice little shadow side to side, and then right at the, right at like the, the corner point here. We're gonna bring a nice little dagger stroke up. And that's what's gonna give him that mean, err look, right? See that? We can bend in, bend in those dagger strokes a little bit. Give him some nice little wrinkles up there on his skull line simple now again off of that same little point but we're gonna kind of bring a shade in off to the side of the nose on both sides see that just a nice little shadow to each side boom all my teeth are flying as i'm doing this <laughs> I don't think I used enough glue. Usually I have trouble taking them off. This time they're just like, fuck you, go ahead. Anyway, um, now we're going to do our cheeks. So coming off the, the, the side here, we're going to kind of bring a little stroke up towards that shadow we just made, right? Same thing on the other side. Designs like this are really good also for, for making yourself kind of like asynchronous, you know, so if you're doing it one way, you get kind of get used to doing it the other way. Um, and it builds good practice and good control on your fingers. So again, bring another one in, kind of right in the middle there. Boom. And then we're just going to bring a shadow up off the edge, though. Don't don't touch that edge. Leave that little bit of a white edge. See that, bam. A nice little shadow. Boom. Now the, these eyes here, right, the top of the eyes, I'm just gonna lay a shadow, a nice little gray right on there. Nothing too crazy, just a nice, nice little gray right on there. Now, we can shade our teeth, and this time you could just come right off the teeth. You don't have to leave any space. And right off the lines, just bring a nice little dagger stroke, fade it going up. And then here on the edge of this, we're going to kind of bring our shadow. We're going to hit the edge of this, of our stencil here, and then bring it around. Same thing on the other side. We're gonna use the edge of the stencil and bring it around. Make sure you're shading your teeth. And then just one quick little shadow around the nose. Boom. And then I always like doing a little shadow right in the middle there. All right, just so it gives it a nice little depth. And again, this is where you, we've kind of got the undertones, right? Where you got the shape of it. Now you can give it the texture. So if you wanna come in, and really give yourself, you know, some nice little bone scratches and pits, and maybe it's just an old skull and has a lot of wear and tear. Whatever it is, the story on your skull, um, you know, this is the time to really flesh that out. Maybe you want to add some cool little tattoos on him. Whatever it is, I, I like seeing you guys all get super creative with it. Um, but now is the time where we do that. And I'm just going to go ahead and give my skull some, some texture, not nothing too crazy.
just so he looks like a lived in skull, right? Something something that's been used. Bring it all the way around that area that we uncovered. Including around the eyes and up on his brow. Just a little bit of hatching, a little bit of stippling. You guys see me do this all the time. But it's just a great and easy way of adding a little texture to everything. Simple enough. Then we're going to do the teeth. And obviously I've already lost a few teeth here. Somebody's been punching them out. I'm going to start on this side and just kind of lay my shadows in quickly. But again, you're going to get what you put in. So if you, especially if you're just beginning, if you want them to look really good, I would just take your time. Make sure you get a nice, good little shadow real quick. And one thing I used to do sometimes too, just before I built up the, the, the confidence is I would just kind of just, you know, practice it on the side. Like, okay, I, I kind of want to do it there. All right, that's where I need to do. And then I'd come over here and then just hit that edge right there. Boom. Right, and that way you have a good way of, of transferring it over there. Right? I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but you know, just kind of take the part you're going to work on. It's like, all right, I'm going to do a little bit of a sideways curve this way, you know? And I'd come over here and, and then do my little bit of a sideways curve right on that edge. Right? Just a good way of, of practicing it right before you do it and just. Give it a nice little, mm, okay, and then good. And on all these teeth edges here, you don't really need to hit them very hard or anything. Just a nice little light shadow on the top teeth is more than enough. So, <clears throat> and then we can remove this last one. Cool. Then we're going to just take some black and kind of reinforce everything we've done. Again, just going to take a little bit of black and right off of the cheekbone here, just bring in our shadow. Going in. A little bit around. Same thing on the other side. A little bit, bring it around. Same thing on the teeth, you know, if you want to match them up to the bottom a little bit. Now, obviously, this is more of a cartoony type of a skull. This is not a super realistic skull or anything. But if you do want to achieve a more realistic skull and stuff, um, nowadays, obviously, you could just get on Google and, and like literally look up a human skull and you know look up a bunch of reference images so you could kind of get the best idea and that's what i would recommend um back in the day i had a what was called the da vinci's skull which is just a, a like a sculpture of a skull and i used to take that and pose it around to get the best uh, look and I'm actually not quite even sure what I ha where, what happened to that thing when I moved. <clears throat> One thing I forgot is to hit all the bottom edge of those teeth, those top teeth with that shadow there. Make sure you hit that. Again, just finishing up with the black. And we're doing a little bit of detail here, a little bit of shading. Maybe we want a nice little crack right here. And maybe another one. Bam. I'll take one over here. And it's going to extend over here. Hit a nice shadow across the top. 
bring a little bit of a shadow in on each side. Boom. Then we're just going to shade in right here on the eyes and bring in a line around that. Now I like doing that freehand uh, because one thing you'll notice is it creates depth and it makes the top of the eye look like it's rolled. So instead of just being a sharp old edge like it is here on this side, you'll notice that this side has that nice soft edge and it kind of makes it look like it's kind of more you know coming towards you like whereas this one is just you know like uh, and then an edge you know and so just a kind of a little way of adding some depth into the picture quick little tip and I just hit that nice little freehand in there and again if you want to look at, at a skull skull a skull images and stuff you will find the skull like has all these holes and stuff inside the eye um, so if you want to add that in there or give it some texture inside the eye or maybe you want yours to have eyeballs whatever it is now would be the time to do it and that's it maybe do some little bit of detail inside of the nose here as well as hit the edge with a little bit of a freehand line just to give it all a nice again a nice look and that's it we're done with the skull skulls all finished all right. bam now we can move on with the hat so starting we're gonna start off on this side and all I'm gonna do is just take this piece off the, the hats probably the easiest part even though it's half the design. Now you see that it has these two wrinkles right here, right? So I'm gonna take, you know, again, one of our my real flame stencils, <coughs> mikesbrush.com. <coughs> and we're gonna use this to create our folds here. I'm gonna start with the gray. And all I'm gonna do is take it. And this paint settles really quick, man. I don't know why. I'm going to use it on the edge there to create a couple of quick little folds. I'm going to shade it off the edge. Now on the top edge, I'm just going to lay one quick shadow. Bam. On the bottom edge, I'm going to come in and we're going to kind of maybe bring in some more little ruffles or maybe folds or bends, whatever you want to call them. And kind of bring it in a little darker going up right I hit this edge along here boom and then we're just going to reinforce that with the black so we're going to bring a little bit of black right on the edge right here and a little bit of shadows just going up same thing and I'm not going to hit that top one with any black at all. I am going to come in and hit our folds. One there. And one there. Just a little bit. Just again, we're just reinforcing the gray. So you should still see the gray on the, on the fold coming off, right? Shouldn't be too crazy. Now, if you want to add detail, right? So like, again, this, this is probably look pretty good when you're done. But if you want to go that extra mile, we've already added all the detail into the skull. Um, maybe we'll do some stitching. So I want to add our kind of our where our two fabrics meet here. And then I'm just going to do some nice little dots. One dot after another dot to make it into some stitching there. Going all the way up and all the way back down. All I'm doing is quickly pulling back on that trigger and just making nice little fine dots all the way. You can see that nice little quick, simple, easy way to make it look like it's stitched together. <clears throat> Gonna move to the other side. And we're gonna pretty much do the same process we just did on the other side. 
we have the direction of our folds right here and we're just going to take off this main piece gray again just put one in there and then one in there we're going to throw a little bit of a shadow across the top and then we're going to come in on the bottom with a nice thicker shadow and some nice strokes going up to kind of simulate some fabric hit that edge here on the side Then we're going to come back in with the black and reinforce it all along this bottom edge. Bam. And again, just come back in with the gray. And we're just going to do a nice little line, the finest line. And we're just going to bring it back down. And we're going to bring in our dots. Quick, fast, easy, simple. <clears throat> now on this piece here, we're gonna go ahead and remove it and fold it up. All right, so we're not gonna completely take it off. We're just gonna take it off up to here. And then we're gonna fold it like this. Let's right, so take that whole piece and we have folded it over. We're going to start with the gray, and then we're going to bring in a shadow around our bell here, using the gray, and then we're going to bring that going up, bam, off the sides here, right, so off the left side, right side here on the hat, we're just going to come in going towards the center, and going up, bam. Going towards the center, and then we're going to start going up, bam. We're going to take our black, and all I want to do with the black is just hit a little bit on the edge. Not much, just a little bit on the edge right there, boom. And then on the bell, we're going to hit the bottom of the bell, and then we're going to hit the edge of the hat there just a little bit bam then we can remove this piece make sure to leave the bell behind faith on that stain but let's try so <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and start with the gray come off the bell there and off this right hand side and around and then on the top here we're gonna bring in some folds with the gray nothing crazy and going off and around here on the bell <clears throat> Nothing too crazy. Then I'm going to bring the stitching. All right, so right off the center here, I'm just going to kind of make it go up. It's going to kind of disappear there, and then it's going to kind of come around this way. Bring in some shadows right here, and finish up the stitching. Bum, 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 bum. Little dots. All the little dots. If you want 
wanted to add some folds more pronounced with your shield. Go ahead. I think that looks pretty good. And since that bell already decided to come off, I'm just going to start there. Remove the top of the bell. And we're going to hit a shadow on the right hand side of the bell and the left hand side of the bell. Just kind of a circular shadow. Remove the bottom part of the bell. And then we're going to bring kind of a line across. We're using the gray and a nice shadow to go around. All it is, bam. Just with the gray, I'm not even gonna hit black in there. Uh, maybe some black freehand, but it looks nice, but it, it looks pretty good as it is. I'm not gonna mess with it. Take off the tops of the bells. Might as well do them both. And we can shade in. bottoms that's what she said <laughs> bring that line across and a shadow around boom and that's it that's it my friends we have finished Let's go ahead and take a look, see? See what we end up with. So, that's what it looks like with masking on. Let's take this all off. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that fancy guy. Let's see, is that focused? Uh, there you go. Pretty cool. I dig it. Got a nice little skull with a Joker hat on. Get it all nice and detailed in. And I don't even think it needs a background. I think it looks pretty clean just like that. I mean, if you want to add some smoke and stuff, hmm. I mean, we're already here. Let's add some smoke to it. Now, using the real flame skits is real easy to get some smoke. Right, you could just lay. You can start by laying off where you want your smoke, right? So, some nice smooth lines. And I want one smoke line like this, and maybe one like that. All right? Then we're gonna take our flame set, gonna hook it up. You see this this edge where it kind of comes in? I'm gonna take this edge here, right? this this edge on the flame kit here and kind of bring it and then build the line coming off of it really loosely with the gray same thing on this one maybe it's coming around this way and again very loosely on there and build it going out come back and work in some freehand on there Same thing, we're gonna kind of have it going this way and out that way. And there we go, we got it kind of going out that way. And bring it more on this side. Smoke is just cool, man. Don't ask me why smoke is cool. Smoke is just cool. There you go. Got our cool, smoky little Joker airbrush skull. <laughs> you have a, yeah, this, 
I, you know, how many Joker skulls I've done on my life in, on shirts is actually pretty, pretty ridiculous. Um, so yeah. So anyway, guys, thank you guys all for watching. I hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, as always, and uh, as always, thank you guys for all the support. Thank you to all the Skull Squad members again for showing up today in the chat and being part of today's video. I very much appreciate it. Um, shout out to our sponsor, Createx, once again, for providing the paint for today's video. Shout out to Spray Gunner for providing the links for today's, um, for not today's video, but for all you guys and for me to use and to, you know, buy stuff. Um, but also as a way of providing a kickback to the channel. Um, so yeah. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Hopefully, hopefully you guys all have a good day. Good luck to you guys trying this at home. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Later. <laughs> it's not easy, Irby. It's not easy. It's just I've been doing it for 20-something years now. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs>